Welcome back to the Dad Life Podcast. Today I have my very first guest. He's an old friend of mine. He's also a single dad. His name is Ryan. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, how you guys doing? Before we get into everything, let's give the listeners a bit of a backstory. How old is your daughter? Uh, she turned two in March, so she's two and a half. Nice. And how long were you with her mom for? Uh, we were probably together for about uh, two and a half years. We got together uh, just before uh, my daughter was, uh, or before we found out that uh, she was pregnant. The other day on Facebook, I saw that you posted pictures of you, your daughter, and her mom all together at the fair. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we have a we have a really good kind of thing going where uh, if there's an event that we either one of us want to take our daughter to, then. Um, we do call the other person and see if they do want to go. And some things are tradition, like our butch art gardens at Christmas, uh, this, the, the fair, uh, you know, we do her birthdays together. We try to do as much as you can as, uh, as co-parents, uh, for the benefit of our child. Yeah. That's how it should be. Exactly. So later that day, I saw that you posted that you got some messages questioning why you hang out with your ex. I did. Yeah. Um, it was, um, uh, there's, I, I don't know, this is, this is kind of a hard one to kind of go to get into. Uh, a lot of people will understand. A lot of people won't understand. Um, I believe, um, good co-parenting, uh, is a respect between, um, both parents, uh, for the benefit of the child. Um, we, you know, we aren't together anymore. She's moved on. Uh, I had moved on uh, at that time. Um, but uh we do a lot of stuff together um it's for our daughter uh we want to create memories and everything like that I actually brought the facebook post up and i can read it to you if you'd like yeah sure read it it says um okay i'm going to say this once for all you people out there that have an opinion about it i had an awesome morning at the fair with my daughter and her mom and in brackets yes my ex-girlfriend we all laughed joked smiled and made some amazing memories that my daughter will cherish forever and I posted a ton of pics. I got home and checked my messages, and I had four questioning why I hang out with my ex or some other other questions along that line. The fact that I respect my ex and respect her even more as a mother is apparently a mystery to some people. Just because it didn't work out romantically doesn't mean they are a bleep person. We have both moved on and are happy in life. We don't hang out every day. We do and will continue to hang out with our child and make amazing memories. I fully believe that when a child sees their separated parents getting along, laughing, and respecting each other, they will grow into amazing people. That is the hope for my child. If you have a problem with that, kindly remove yourself from my life. I don't need or want people like that. Peace out. So that was the, that was the post I kind of made. And uh, it, it's, it's what I strongly believe. Um... Now, one of those people was the girl I was dating at the time, and that kind of sewered uh, that relationship really fast. Yeah. So. Um, so what exactly was her problem? Uh, her problem was that uh, I was hanging out um, uh, with my ex. So does she have kids? She does. She has two. Really? Yeah. See, my first girlfriend I had after my girl's mom and I split up, she used to get so jealous at the fact that I used to see her almost every day taking the kids home. And she got mad at me one time saying that she should be the one that decides our schedule. And she used to always say like, oh, you should just get back together with Kim. And that's, that's exactly like, what, uh, that's exactly what uh, the girl that I uh, just split with said and uh, continues to say, actually, she said it a, a, a bunch of times prior. And it, it just, it all boils down to an insecurity and a jealousy. Um, I thought it, maybe with her having kids, she might understand, but. I, I always, um, we were together for four months, just over four months. And I, I always encouraged her to do things as a family unit with her and her ex. Um, they don't get along. Uh, so that might that's, be. That's pretty common. Very common, yeah, and um, it, it's it's actually pretty sad. Um, there's obviously extenuating circumstances in any relationship as to why you may not get along, uh, abuse or or a lot of different variances. But um, you know, they didn't get along, and uh, so she she doesn't do anything, and, and that's really sad for the kids. You know, even if you don't get along as parents, you can still get along as 
you know, parents to the child. Or yeah, children. and they want, like, even tonight, my 10-year-old, we were driving, I was driving them back to their mom's, and I forget how it came up, but uh, she said something about being sad, and I was like, are, are you sad? Is there something in your life that makes you sad? Four years later, she said, I'm sad that you and mommy don't live together. That's hard. Like, so we get along great. We don't have any problems. Well, we've even, you know, walked our dogs together after I dropped them off and we do birthday parties together and, As it you know, be, it just, yeah. Yeah. that's what the kids want and it's healthy for them. They see that we can get along. It's like my parents, they split up when I was like before I was one and they, yeah. they talk on the phone. They, you know, they hang out, they both are at family functions and Absolutely. my mom hangs out with my dad's girlfriend and they yeah. go swimming and they go to movies and like that to me is awesome and that's how it should be. Exactly. Yeah. I did, and that's the way I, I, I really hope it is going to be for um, her mom and I for the rest of our days on this planet. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it's, 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 it's an interesting topic. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. That's why I wanted to bring you on because that, Seeing your post, it just reminded me of how things were with my ex and how she used to get mad about stuff. And there's times when, you know, my daughter, we, we'd share a bed, me and my girlfriend and my daughter, my youngest, would come in in the middle of the night and she ended up telling me that she wasn't, she didn't want her to come to bed. And I was like, there's no That's way horrible. I'm like denying my daughter cuddles and, you know, come to my bed in the middle of the night. Like, it's funny enough. You, uh, do you mind if I just, I'll, I'll I, I, in January, um, when I was going through a rough time with my ex, um, uh, and I was, I was really frustrated in life and I wrote something, um, let's see if I can bring it up here. You lay me down to sleep, daddy, with so much love and care. Sometimes I fuss, open my eyes just to make sure you are still there. It's dark in here with scary things. There are monsters here. I know. Please check the closet and under the bed so I'm safe before you go. I know you are frustrated, Daddy, when, it, when I wake up before you do. I had bad dreams and I am scared. I need to cuddle up to you. Let me lay on your chest and close my eyes and listen to your heart. I know I'm safe wrapped into your arms and we will never be apart. See, that's, that's what I feel when my daughter comes and uh, wakes me up at uh, 3 o'clock in the yeah, morning. that's and, awesome. And I'm sitting there wanting to bang my head against the wall or throw her out the window. But, <laughs> you, know, at the, you know, sometimes when you get frustrated, you just got to... You know, sit back, just remember that, you know, she's two. Yeah. Uh, well, even my 10-year-old will come in sometimes. And honestly, laying in my bed between them, there's no place I'd rather be. That's like my favorite. Exactly. You know, I have yeah. both of them in my arms and yeah, there's yeah. nothing like it. Well, you see, now my daughter sleeps till, um, she's, she's well, she'll, she'll sleep till about six if I let her. I'm up at five every day. And when I have her, uh, I always, I get up, have my coffee and everything and get ready for the day downstairs while she's still asleep. And I go upstairs and I wake her up with tickles. <laughs> nice. She just hates it and loves it at the same time. <laughs> so how, how was it, um, with her going back and forth? Like how often do you have her? Well, we're actually, um, this week we have a, um, a mediated custody hearing kind of thing. It's, it's, um. It's very amicable between my ex and I. Like, there's no, uh, there's no. I want her two weeks on, and you have her for like eight hours. It's nothing like that. We want shared even time. Um, it's just how we're going to structure it. Um, four on, four off is kind of what I'd like. And on the third day, we all go to a park together, go swimming together, or something like that. So you really don't ever go more than, you know, two and a half days without mm -hmm. seeing your kid. But um, right now, I have her on uh, Sunday night, Monday night, and Thursday nights. And it's kind of too, it's a little sporadic. And I, I think that's really kind of affecting her where she doesn't really get a chance to like, you know, I pick her up from school on Thursday and pretty much I see her for two hours before I take her to school on Friday morning. And oh yeah. It's kind of a, well. Yeah, it's tough, but my experience anyways, it seems like the kids adjust. Like when I still lived with my ex, she took them to school. I picked them up. So we kept it that way. And they had a hard time with the back and forth every single day, but now they're so that you they seem all right with it. That you'd oh, she'd pick them up at your place if it was your days and drop them off. She takes them to school every day. I pick them up from school and then I drop them off at seven. 
Oh, but then okay, she, they, they sleep over Thursdays, and then we switch every weekend too. So I see them pretty much oh, almost every day. That's awesome. That's that's yeah. a good way to do it. And both of us, that's how we want it. Like, and my ex too, the first girlfriend I had after her, um, she's like, "Oh, you guys should do one week on, one week off." And neither of us wanted to go that long without seeing them. I know. I got. I, yeah, I get all kind of. I, I almost get like almost a little agitated. If I don't, if I, you know, I go through withdrawals from seeing her, it's like, <laughs> I, want to, yeah. I want to see my little peanut. Yeah. Although some quiet time is nice, but. <laughs> well, absolutely. But um, that quiet time is usually filled with, you know, other stuff, you know, that you need to catch up on or, or trying to date. That's. Uh, yeah. Are you uh, going to get right back into it? <laughs> I've been asked that a few times from my coworkers, but um I don't know. Um, a, a few girls have messaged and expressed a little bit of interest, but I don't want to go out on a rebound. That's that's the thing. I'm, I, you know, it, it took me a long time to, or well, not a long time. I mean, I was, I was dating that, that girl there for four months, and don't get me wrong, she's an awesome girl. Like I have nothing bad to say about her. Have you ever been on the dating apps? I tried them. I did. Um, I saw the the baby mama on there. Oh, you did? We did, yeah, yeah. It was kind of... You uh, swiped right? I did. <laughs> it was funny. I swiped right and she swiped right and we actually started chatting on the on one of the dating apps. It was pretty funny. Hey, you're going to come pick the kid up? And she's like, no, I, I got a date and ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, so is she with somebody now? I think she's dating somebody, yeah. She hasn't come out and told me. Um, but I... I uh, I've had suspicions and I've, I've heard through the grapevine that she's been, she's gone on a few dates, which is great. And I, and I fully support it. I, I hope like I told her right from the get go when we split up, I'm like, definitely put me on your relationship resume. Cause I'll give you a great recommendation. I think you're an amazing woman. So how would you feel when the time comes that she introduces your daughter? Like, is there a time limit that you think that she should wait or, or what about you? Do you, I introduced, it took a, well, there was, there was an accidental introduction. Um, we were up at, uh, uh, one of our local parks here, my daughter and I, and it just so happened that, uh, the girl I was dating, uh, called and said, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm just with my daughter at the park here. And she's like, I'm literally at the gate to that park. No. I was like, oh, okay. Are you a stalker <laughs> or are you just a coincidence? She probably was watching you. <laughs> yeah. Creepy, but. Seeing if you're going to lie to her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> loser <laughs> um so yeah and she uh yes yeah, so, so it was kind of an accident it was definitely an accidental introduction or not an accidental introduction it was just like a an unplanned introduction and it was funny they hit it off and my daughter wanted to hold her hand i'm just like okay seriously like you're gonna get kidnapped one day because you are way too friendly with everybody and <laughs> but she really liked her and um, my daughter really liked her so would you, if she asked, would you let her see her now? Would I let? Your ex? The, like the girl I was dating, not the baby mama? Yeah. So Lady B is what we'll call her. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, what do you mean? Like, uh, if she called me and said, hey, I really miss your daughter. Can I see my daughter? Can I see your daughter? Yeah. I'd probably call to catch a predator, but. <laughs> <laughs> my ex did that. And actually, she, she asked their mom because we weren't talking. Yeah. And her mom, their mom asked me and I said, no, because I felt like all these rules that she had, like, you know, they weren't allowed to come to the bed and she bought them some gardening tools and uh, a kite and like some painting stuff. And when she moved out, she took all that stuff. Huh. So I, yeah, I, I said no to her seeing the kids. And now I'm in the situation where my last girlfriend has three kids and I saw them almost every day for a year and I haven't seen them for four months and I still dream about them like twice a week. That's crazy. Like I, I'm so upset about it still. I miss them so much. And so I guess, I guess that would be the thing. So, you know, we were together for four, four months, four and a half months, whatever it would be. Now she has two kids and her two kids met my daughter, um, twice. Um, once was at the pool, um, up Island and, uh, another time was we went all went out for dinner. Um, once again, the dinner was kind of like, a an accidental introduction to her family. I was just actually driving through and they were just happened to be in the right area. I was just <laughs> like, so it was kind of, uh, just, uh, 
well, do you want to grab dinner? And I got the kids. Well, I got the kids too. It's like, yeah, well, let's, let's see what happens. And the kids all got along. So it's going back to what you were asking about. Would I let, uh, would I let her see the kid? So they weren't close. No, yeah. like they only met, uh, like Lady B and, uh, my daughter, they'd probably, I don't know, a dozen times, maybe 15 times. You know, they saw each other and they, they, they got along famously. Like it was great. But I think at this point, since it was, it, the relationship hadn't evolved into a, uh, there was no sleepovers when my daughter was in the house. Like, you know, there was, it was definitely kept at arm's length. It wasn't um, like, come snuggle up and I'll put you to bed kind mm-hmm. of uh, scenario. Or her kids weren't attached to mine. So I think if she called me and said, hey, can I, can I see your daughter? I'd probably say So that'd no. be weird? If she did, I don't. I wouldn't say weird because everybody's, you know, her intentions might be good. Like, oh, I, I really miss your daughter. You know, um, I wouldn't say weird. I'd say kind of just no. It just let's let let let's let done be done and let's move on. You know, so so you don't have all the apps on your phone yet. I don't know, and I'm actually gonna. I, I have no intention of uh, going back on there. Um, <laughs> it sucks. I, I I have six on my phone. Dating and apps? Yeah. And I've there's been, six dating apps out there now? Oh, there's there's tons. I know, you should I, see my Facebook feed. It's like ad after ad of just really? dating sites. But I've, I've so, so realized. You got, so you got what, like Tinder? I know there's Tinder, Bumble. Uh, yeah, uh, Plenty match, of Fish, Match, Plenty of fish, OK yeah. Cupid. OK Cupid, I haven't heard of that one. Badu. I've warm. never heard about it. I met my last girlfriend on OK Cupid. Well, you're on Grinder as well, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I realized a- this last week, I I decided to take a couple of days break from looking at the girls on these apps. Yeah, I would literally wake up, roll over, grab my phone, and start swiping. Jeez, I would see that I have no matches and feel like crap the rest of the day. That yeah. was how I would yeah. wake up, and I yeah, taking a couple of days off. It's head. like all yeah, it totally does. All this sadness and stress and whatever, it was just gone. It's gone, yeah, yeah, exactly. So even now, I've I've gone back, but I'm trying to only do it a couple times a day. Like l- literally, I would take up my phone any chance I got. So, swipe, you, swipe, I'd be all caught up. You're like on the keto diet of dating apps, <laughs> <laughs> low carbs. I you know I, I I found when I was on the dating apps, um, you know I I was I had Bumble and I had Tinder. And, um, did you, did you meet many people? I talked to, a, I thought I talked to a ton. Um, I think honestly, I met up with, um, three, maybe four. Um, and it never, it never even, never evolved into anything more than a coffee. I just, yeah. I, you know, the other thing was, you know, um, I was on, I was on the two and then my buddy, I think he was kind of, you know, like yourself, he had all of them. Like, he was even on the Facebook. Oh, yeah, I'm on that, that too. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So you're on seven. Yeah, lucky number seven. Um, you might find something there on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, so it was funny because I was on mine and we just happened to be sitting there doing nothing. I was scrolling and, you know, swiping and whatever. He's like, hey, she's on this one too. And then, oh, I saw her on that too. And it's like, okay, you know you meet on tinder but she's talking to you know 40 other guys or 50 yeah. other guys on 10 different apps and on websites and yeah i see all the same ones on like, all of them yeah it's like you really think like you're not you're not broadening your horizons here you're just you're, you're wasting your time on six well, it's different apps. funny since i was on them before my last girlfriend going back on i still see a lot of the same people Exactly. Yeah, it, it it doesn't look like anything's really changed in the dating cesspool out there on the you know online dating. I actually went out with someone recently that asked me out at a show last Saturday. That was I don't remember the last time I <laughs> made a date with someone actually in person. Someone, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I loved true. it too because I was sitting with her at the end of the night, and I was going through my head thinking about all these questions that I normally text. Yeah. And I thought it was so cool saying it in person. I know. <laughs> like, like what do you finally face? I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, totally. just, I mean, question mark, I mean, just, what do you do for a living? You know, like, it's literally been years since that has happened to me. It, it, it's, it, it's almost like a lost art in a way, you know, like how do you approach somebody? You know, 
one of the biggest things that I'm scared about nowadays is you see all this. Well, actually, I could pretty much nail this down. The whole Me Too movement, that hashtag Me Too movement, um, scared guys. Like we were yeah, terrified yeah. to go even just like, miss, I just just want to tell you, you look gorgeous today. You look very beautiful. How you know, dare you? Yeah, I'm offended. That's sexual <laughs> harassment. This is that. It's this. It's like actually no. I just thought you were looking beautiful and I wanted to give you a compliment. Yeah. But it 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 the whole. Don't get me wrong. Like I believe in the Me Too movement. If you've been uh, sexually harassed, sexually abused, sexually assaulted in any form, by all means, I'm not putting you down at all. Um, I believe you should report it. And I believe that the person that did it did it uh should be uh, prosecuted to the full extent of the law um but i think what's kind of happened is guys are just scared now to approach women we don't want to be labeled as a, a, like a, a sexual predator you yeah. know when, when you break it down to the brass tacks i've you know. always been scared <laughs> <laughs> You're a bitch. I'm way more confident with the texts. <laughs> totally, yeah, yeah. The keyboard warrior over here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I love meeting people organically. Um, I'm a very talkative person. Um, everybody's always said that about me. I can just go make friends anywhere. Um, I'm a big fan of just smiling and and saying hi to people. Like at the coffee shop. Um, I'd love to find a coffee shop that uh, has a good looking girl that's single and um, because I'd be there every day. Yeah. But, you know, um, it's tough to meet people organically um, because even when you do meet them organically and face to face, kind of like yourself, in the back of my head, I'm always wondering how many apps does she have on her phone right now <laughs> that she's, I just got to go to the washroom for a second. Swipe, 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 yeah. swipe, swipe, swipe. Hey, I'm, I'm guilty. I'll do that on dates. If they go to the bathroom, I'll take out my phone. I did it the other night. <laughs> it's horrible. It, it, it's, it's great. It's horrible. It just keep time. my eye out when she's coming back. And... Yeah. Yeah. You guys are horrible. <laughs> but I knew right when I was there that I wasn't going to want it anything. Was, yeah. So. I wasn't going anywhere, you know, but it, okay. So. So as as a single dad, you know, like where does the wasting time go? Like, like where, like at what point, like, did you know when she asked you out that it wasn't going to go anywhere? Uh, or is it kind of like, I, let's yeah, maybe. I'll be honest. She was really drunk and I was <laughs> curious to how she would be sober. not drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sober. So, uh, but yeah, I, I, I didn't actually have high hopes. She's really, really nice. It's just, uh, yeah, it w- wasn't a right fit for me. So, y- y- you, you know, I, I've known you for coming up to 25 years, and you've always been a very busy guy. You're always hard to nail down to go have a beer with her, a coffee with her, anything like that. You know, and now that you have kids, your your time is, is pretty much completely gone. You're, you're counting your minutes. So let me ask you, as a single dad, where do you find the time to go out and have a date? Like, like we, you and I have been trying to have a dog walk or go walk for about six <laughs> oh, yeah, months now. We were practicing. At the moment, right now, I have no practices. But yeah, when we first started talking about that, I was literally like, I had all these shows coming up and songs to learn. We were practicing <laughs> yeah. every night. So there's a couple nights a week where I'd have a couple hours pretty much. So they basically have to work around my schedule. Like this, this last girl that I went out with, she didn't have any kids, so she was yeah. other than work. She had no plans, and she she, she, she actually free. said to me that her life's boring and she just watches Netflix. And that sounds good to me. That's like, the girl you need to get away from, though. Away, get away from the girls. Why? That, that, to say I, I have, I'm bored, and I just because you know, there's we live in we live in like paradise. You know, I was so happy when I found uh, the girl I was with because she loved hiking. She liked the outdoors. Oh, yeah, yeah. She liked going to the beach. She liked walking. She liked actually going and doing stuff. Like if she if she had like her, she has two kids. Um, she owns three uh, salons, uh, like massage salon, um, and a couple other um, beauty kind of stuff. Um, and she's very well known. She's very high end. She has a client list that's the size of Manitoba. Um, but every free minute she had, she would, you know, in between clients, she'd just go for a walk or go for a run and mm-hmm. go, go find somewhere new to explore. I could never, if a girl ever said to me, 
all my free time, I just want to sit on the couch and watch Netflix. I'd be like, bye. <laughs> well, bye. But when she said that to me, I was picturing evenings after work, after I drop off the kids, <laughs> and I just want to relax before mm-hmm. bed. But yeah, weekends and stuff, like I like taking the kids out and we'll go around the lake or totally, yeah. find a new spot to without explore. And- <laughs> yeah, once again, without me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they're they're not a big fan of walking. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't have two wheels, I don't want to go. It's got to have wheels, Dad. There's a lake that I go around. It takes me about forty minutes. When I'm with the kids, it takes two hours. <laughs> On a bike or walking? Walking, walking, <laughs> walking. Holy jeez! Wow. And most of the way, they're like, oh, "I don't want to walk. Can we go home?" Yeah, we're halfway around the lake, so we can go back or we can keep going. But it's gonna be the same yeah, amount of same time. Same time. Yeah, we're already. <laughs> You're just as dedicated as I am, kid. <laughs> so what 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 made you want to start doing podcasts? Like, so y- your podcast is Dad Life. Um, so you just wanted to do a, a like, kind of like um, an expose, kind of on what it's like being a, a single dad. In- yeah. So the last few months, I've been listening to a ton of podcasts, like pretty much all day at work. What's your what's your favorite? Like what's what's what what's what gets Well, you the, the ones I actually listen to are uh like entertainment stuff like there's a guy named Logan Paul. He's a YouTuber, yeah, but yeah, he definitely know Logan Paul. He has a podcast called Impulsive and they do 3 times a week and they're up to like 120 episodes or whatever. I've listened to every single one and Conan O'Brien I really like and uh there's a guy what's his name? Eddie Trunk. He's like some yeah, uh, music guy. He's always got musicians on and but uh, I don't know if you know, but I did, I guess two years ago, I was doing a bunch of vlogs yes. with the kids yeah, and then I, we were, I called that the dad life vlog and the kids love doing it. They still ask me, oh, we should do a vlog. And um, But I've been thinking about doing a podcast for a long time and never really knew kind of what to talk about. And I thought, oh, I'll just discuss like me being a single dad and what I go through. And I thought that I could just get out what's in my head that I don't really talk to people about and yeah get it yeah get it. you know and i thought it'd be cool to have people like you come on and discuss you know you being a single dad and what you experience and yeah um it, it's yeah when you told me you were going to do this dad life and i, I listened to your first one the first couple uh i thought it, your concept is absolutely fantastic and i think i think everybody seems to be talking about you know well, let's put it this way. You go on Facebook and you read, oh, it's so hard to be a single mom. And, you know, single mom this, single mom that. You got the single mom's resource center. You got single mom's care center. You got single mom's this, single mom's that. What about the single dads? Yeah. You know, like we're in that we, we, we face the same problems on a daily basis that single mothers do. Like childcare, feeding our kids, yeah. housing our kids, yeah. driving our kids, fuel costs. You know, like it, 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 we, 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 we all suffer the same. So I, I, this this podcast is just fantastic, and I love the concept of it. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because, uh, like, I know there's deadbeat dads out there, but there's also deadbeat moms. Absolutely. And when the girls were younger, um, the library has this pamphlet, and it lists a uh, hundred books that the kids should read before kindergarten or whatever. And really, the kids uh, can read before kindergarten. Well, we we would read with them. You oh, know, read with we okay, we yeah. go to the library every week and get like ten books or whatever, and. We ended up making through the uh, whole list, but I remember saying, like, making a comment back then to their mom, like, "Why do all these books? They just have the mom." I know. In them. I, I yeah. Like, where is the dad? <laughs> I know. I, I I said the same thing to uh, baby mama, and uh, it's funny. She was actually totally agreeing with me. She's like, "Yeah." So, have you ever dated anyone with a kid? I did actually. I was engaged to one. Um, before I met um, uh, baby mama. I was, really? You were engaged? I was. For how long? How long were you with her? Uh, almost a year. Oh, how old? How many kids? She had one um, who was 13 at the time. Or oh, 12 really? at the time. Wow. 12 at the time, yeah. Um, and it was it was a girl. Uh, she had, I was dating a girl and she had a daughter too. <laughs> You were dating her daughter too. <laughs> I, I knew I should. I, I knew I shouldn't have said that. Okay. Here comes that whole Me Too movement thing coming there. It wasn't what I expected. I expected to be the dad and this, that, the other thing, and, it, and that really wasn't was really what it was. 
um obviously there was no diaper changing and everything like that and you know um she could take care of herself she's 12 years old so it, it was it was it was actually really fun it was an enjoyable experience i got to you know like kind of watch her raise her daughter and it was it was, it was, it was quite interesting hmm. but that was kind of my first um first kind of foray into actually you know making a commitment towards somebody that had a child and it was scary but it was it was definitely rewarding yeah. at the same time my last girlfriend when i first met her she had an eight week old and oh, she brought wow. her she fell i held her she fell asleep in my arms for like 40 minutes and i ended up being at her first birthday crazy i i uh i miss her so much i had just like two weeks ago i woke up well i was dreaming about uh me and the girls being at their house and her her one-year-old would not look at me and i literally woke up crying wow i miss her so much almost feels like you're a kid I, yeah like yeah. i was there you know saw her learn to walk and Jeez. she like right yeah. before it ended you know she was starting to talk and yeah i went to paris and we split up uh, a couple of days after I got back, but um, my girlfriend picked me up from the airport and her one-year-old was in the back seat and I had my arm back there and she was just holding onto my finger. Like That's the coolest thing. She missed world, me so much. And, you know, and, I love that. It's just, I love it when the, my, like my daughter just holds my one finger, my index finger just holds it. And I was like, oh, that's the coolest feeling in the world. Yeah. I love that. It just sucks that all yeah. that's gone now. So now, now that you're a single dad, you've dated um you know a, a variety of women like like what would it take for you to actually who would who would it have to be to kind of make the commitment where you would going to be like okay you know what i'm not wasting my time anymore cuz you know six dating apps you you're definitely looking for somebody <laughs> right yeah. you know like like what would it who, who's that who's the person that's going to to grab you and just you know, shake your world up to the point where you can't let them go. Um, I don't know. I, I just think I'll know it when I see it. Like it, even with my last girlfriend, she wasn't even that chatty. She wasn't asking me any questions, but there's just something about her picture. I like, I just, I honestly thought it was a fake profile, Yeah. but there's something about her picture. I just wanted to know her. And, uh, I haven't come across anyone like that yet. I actually, I have a date this Sunday. Oh, okay. Coming up. Now, is that from one of the apps? Yeah, off match. Off match. So she seems nice. She's uh, four years older, and she has two kids. I'm, I, I think I want someone with kids. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I could definitely. Yeah, me too. So now are her, are her kids the same age bracket as yours? Uh, no, they're like over 18. Oh, okay. So are they out of the house or still not? Uh, one's in the house. One's not. Now, how do you think, like, here's, here's a big thing. Like I, I've been, like, I've, I've gone on a couple of dates, um, uh, with women that had older kids and one of their big things was they don't want to raise another kid. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about that. Um, they've been there, done that. Kind yeah. Of thing. So do you think that's going to affect your, the prospects or the, well, I find that, uh, some of these girls that I talk to, they'll tell me if they're not looking for someone with young kids. I had someone a couple of weeks ago, uh, we started messaging each other and uh, she, no, I, I asked her if she had kids. It was on Tinder. I didn't have anything in my profile at that time and she didn't have anything. So I asked if she had kids and she said, no, asked me if, if I had kids and I said, yes. And then she asked me how much I have them. So uh, I, yeah. I said, no, you know, almost every day or whatever, told her the schedule and she said, that's too much. She can't do it. So really? Yeah, that was it. So you divulge that type of information like over... I, I feel like, well, I don't give them, you know, names and all that, but I want them to know up front what they're getting into. So now it actually says in my profile, I have two daughters that are seven and 10. And okay. I say that I have them, you know, all the time. And I also say I'm a musician, so I play and because I am busy. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, yeah. I think I was almost too busy for my last girlfriend on Friday and Saturday nights when she's at home with the kids, I'm playing when yeah. I don't have my kids and... I think that bugged her. So I just got to find someone who is okay with all that. Or maybe, you know, maybe we'll have the same weekends when we don't have the kids and she can come to shows or. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. So she's out there somewhere. 
so okay i you know i keep going back to being a single dad and everything like that so being a single dad what would you sacrifice out of your life right now in order to find love like what what would like obviously the kids can't go the dog's got to kind of stay you know like like what would you what would you cut out of your life because you are a busy man like would you stop doing as many shows would you know you play in four cover bands would you drop one of the bands would you you know what would you you know to, to accommodate a woman like it's, it's a tough question isn't it but it's not a tough answer to me it's nothing like i want someone who likes me for me and if they're always welcome around like if I have the kids and we're at that point, they can be over, they can come to shows, they can sleep over, they can, I can stop at their house after a show or whatever. Like I want someone involved in my life. So, okay. Yeah, for sure. I get that. So you're not willing to kind of give up anything. You're not willing to kind of budge on your lifestyle as it is right now. So you're not willing to kind of compromise or sacrifice. No, this is a serious, no, I, I, qu- serious question because I, I feel the same way. Like I'm really not willing to sacrifice or compromise. I, I don't feel like I should have to. If if someone doesn't want to be with me, if I'm too busy, then it's obviously not meant to be. For sure. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I, I thought about that quite a bit. Like, you know, um, what would I give up to be with a girl? And nothing. I'm, I, I'm, I'm pretty steadfast and, you know... I'm definitely not going to give up my relationship with the baby's mother or my daughter's mother, or I'm not giving up my daughter or my dog, you know, uh, like what I no, I'm just not going to sacrifice or, um, but it's probably the same thing. They're welcome to. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. You. They, if they want to, you know, I mean, I, I, you have a different kind of lifestyle. I, I'm kind of more, um, a homebody kind of not really a homebody but like i don't i don't i'm not, i don't go do shows or music and play in cover bands and i'm not out doing stuff like that my stuff is, is a lot of solitary stuff like I, I i do live edge furniture so there's a lot of headphones in sanding down tables yeah. and sanding down wood you know like it's a, it's a lot of solitary um activities that i do that really I mean, yeah, you could involve somebody in it, but I don't really know. The type of girl I'm interested in is definitely not going to want to, you know, start varnishing tables at yeah, 10 yeah. o'clock at night. So, <laughs> you know, she, she could sit there and watch you. She, she could varnish something else, but <laughs> definitely not a table. She could varnish my poles because I have multiple. <laughs> but, that's, but that was a serious question I actually had. I was going to ask, like I've, I've been like, I've been wanting to ask somebody that for a long time. Like, what? What are you going to give up? Because we like once we split from our exes, we filled our spare time with things that we actually love and that we like to do. You know what I mean? You got a dog, right? So after I I I, I posted all the pictures of myself uh, at the fair and got the response I did. Have you ever gotten any like what was your? Have you ever got any backlash from? Um, like I I've never we've been friends on Facebook since I think you know Facebook came out and we both joined, but I don't think I've ever really seen you post too many pictures of. You and uh, your, your kid's mom. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've just never. Actually, uh, maybe I have, or she's been included in a, like a birthday picture. Maybe yeah. I don't know. I don't, actually I don't even think that. But um, yeah, we've just never actually hung out and like. Are you scared to post the pictures because of of what somebody else might think? No, not at all. I just, the only person that has ever said anything to me about talking to her or being friends with her is that one ex that I was with. She just, yeah, she didn't get it. You know, I I can remember when, you know, the last two years of our relationship, we honestly barely spoke. Like she would come home, wouldn't even say hi to each other. So when we moved out, I can specifically remember sitting at my new kitchen table my girlfriend was beside me and I got a text from their mom and she texted me something funny that one of the kids said. And I kind of laughed partly because it was funny, but partly because I was kind of excited that we were getting along. Yeah. And my girlfriend get that, yeah. complained to me that we we're texting too much. Oh, and like girl. to me, like I was yeah. having such a hard time because I just moved out and I was so upset, but I was happy how our relationship was becoming better. And then she tries to take that away from me. Yeah, destroying it almost. I yeah, and that's kind of the way I felt. Like you know, when 
the girl I was with when she messaged me, um, I could probably find the message, but it, it was along the lines of, um, oh, like it's, oh, it, it was like, wow, you guys look so happy together. Maybe you should just be with her. Oh God. Um, yeah. you know, you know, the plans that we had to go on that trip, maybe you should just take her. Uh, oh, that's you should exactly just get married. how my ex was. Exactly. You, you guys just get married and get back together. So, and just, uh, I hope you guys are happy. Let me ask you this. Face. Since she was your girlfriend, did you tell her that you were going to the fair? No, I had asked her to go. And it's it's funny you say this. Um, for about the week prior, um, she she didn't know if she was going to have the kids or not. And I was like, okay, well, if you do, come. Great. So we could all go to the fair together. I said the baby mama wants to go. Um, so we might see her there or whatever like that. Um, there's also uh, a couple of our friends with uh, my daughter's best friend is the same age. Um, they were going, so there's going to be a ton of us. I said, let's all go. And uh, she said, okay, well, let's, let me think about it. And she, she ended up telling me she couldn't go. So on the Sunday morning, I didn't talk to her on the Saturday night. She was, she was busy off doing something, whatever like that. So on the Sunday morning, or sorry, the Monday morning, um, when we went, it was um, about 7.30 in the morning and, you know, we were getting getting packed up ready to go to the fair. It opens at 8, so let's giddy up, let's go. I uh, want to beat the crowds and everything like that. And all of a sudden, my ex called. She's just like, hey, I was just wondering if you guys are going to the fair. I'm like, yeah, actually, we're just packing up right now. She's like, do you mind if we come or mind if I come? I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. I'm like, do you want to swing by and grab us? And she's like, yeah, let's do it. Like, bring me a coffee or wait, you can pick up some coffees and bring me one and we can go to the fair. Blah, blah, blah. She's like, yeah, let's do it. So anyway, she picks me up at about 10 to 8. I get a call at 8 o'clock um, from the girlfriend. And she was, uh, I just, I didn't, I was in the middle of a, I, a custody a conversation with uh, Max at the time. So I really didn't want to take it. So I just hit the the, hey, the silence button, the F off button, <laughs> as, as, as it's comically referred to. But um, yeah, and then I didn't hear anything until I posted the pictures on Facebook. And um, but it, for like a week prior, I was asking her to come and tell her that you know the ex was going to be there, and a whole bunch of people are going to be there. So it was it wasn't a big secret that the ex was going to be there. So I don't know. So sh she did know that she was going. She knew that she was going. She didn't know that she was going to be picking me up. Oh, I think that. Okay, so you know. Uh, yeah, you know, after this all happened, we had like we didn't talk for like four days. Oh, really? Yeah, it was. She's just complete shutdown mode. Not my ex. Well, yeah, my ex, Lady B, the one I was dating yeah, at yeah. the time. She went into complete lockdown. Like I'm talking lockdown. Throw the keys. She deleted me off Facebook. She oh, blocked me on really? Messenger. She blocked my phone number uh, from calls and texts. She blocked my emails. Everything. Like she just went into total year done mode. And I didn't even know, like, I didn't even know she was mad at me. Like, this this is how crazy this situation is. I didn't know she was mad at me. Um, I was just messaging her. And then all of a sudden, I get this pop-up message on Facebook that says, it was actually, it was actually, I think it, yeah, it was on Facebook. It pops up and says, oh, yeah, I hope you're happy with her, blah, 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 blah. She spews out all this verbal garbage at me. And I'm just like, huh? I'm like, what are you mad at? Where's this coming from? Like, what is going on here? And then, and then, yeah, lockdown. Just, oh, God. I... Yeah, and then a few other people start saying stuff, and it's just like... So who were these other people? Like, why did they have a problem? It, they didn't really have a problem with it. I guess they were just like, you know... Just thought it was weird? Well, why, yeah, why are you hanging out with your ex? So why is it weird? It's not weird. No, it's not I, weird. I, to I, me, it's not weird at all. But I guess just not everyone gets it. I, I think as a society, we have, we have lost um, so much of our way, you know, of, you know, of what's right, what's right and what's wrong. Um, you know, what's socially acceptable, what's not socially ac acceptable, and what's the social norms now. The social norm should be a dad loves his daughter, a mom loves her daughter. Let's all come together as a family unit, whether we are together or not. Let's do this for the sake of our child and get along and be happy. Let's put our differences aside 
and we can laugh and joke and carry on, take family pictures, have a great time for the sake of the child. Yeah. And if you have something bad to say, say it to them in private, behind closed doors, over a phone call, over text message, whatever. In front of the kid, let's get along. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite lucky that um, my ex and I get along great. We get along famously. We're friends. We're not everyday hang out, like come over, sit on my couch, watch Netflix yeah. and kind of friends. But, you know, we'll go for a walk with Tanner, you know, just have fun. Yeah. And after being on the, these dating apps and chatting with lots of girls over the last few years, it is so common that these couples are in court or with their exes or they don't even speak or they're in custody battles. So I think it's, it's almost rare that exes will get along. And I just, I don't see what the problem is. See, I've never bashed her. I've never bashed any of my exes. I've, I've never talked badly about them to anybody. I was with her for a reason. It's because she's a decent, honest, nice, caring, loving, loyal, amazing woman. Just because we're not together romantically anymore doesn't mean those have, that that's changed. She's still all those things. She's still a perfect woman. She's just not perfect for me anymore. Yeah. She's perfect for somebody. And I want to treat her with a lot of respect because she is those things. And I want to see those nurture and blossom and grow, not just for her, but for the sake of my daughter. And like I said before, I'll put her on my relationship resume, or she can put me on a relationship resume, because I'll never say anything bad about her. Like I think she's just an awesome person. Yeah. Can I ask your personal question? You can absolutely not answer if you don't absolutely. want to. But just looking back at my own situation, my relationship, I feel like changed after the kids came. Do you think? Do you feel like? because you had a kid is why you guys didn't work? Like, does that have anything to do with it? I've thought about that quite a bit, actually. But, you know, like I, like we were saying earlier, um, we were together for about a month prior to, or, you know, baby mama getting pregnant. So... So, but when she was pregnant, did like, how was... Like, was she grumpy and picking... <laughs> like, were you guys fighting or... I don't want to like, say that, but she wasn't... I, the, it's so hard to explain. When a woman's pregnant, obviously her hormones and everything changes. Oh, yeah, she I, I was a totally different person. Yeah, right? that's what I meant. Yeah. So I didn't really get a chance to know her, who she was, as a unpregnant yeah, with, you yeah. know, a single, no children kind of person. Yeah. I just remember having a loaf of bread thrown at my head. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just curious if that. I, I've worked. had a few things thrown at me, but. Uh, um, luckily I don't have any scars. Um, but yeah, so it was, my relationship with her was a forever evolving, you know, we went from, um, hang out. I had, uh, my RV down at the beach. So that's where, that's where she got pregnant. You know, is we were just hanging out down there, having beach fires and having a couple of drinks and one thing leads to another. It was, she was amazing. Uh, she had a very, she's a very adventurous spirit. Um, she still goes on overnight adventures. I think it's awesome. Um, so I knew that about her. And then it kind of, all of a sudden, we're thrust into the, the chaos of pregnancy. Yeah. And to you people out there, I know this is the dad life podcast, but if you're listening to this and you don't have kids, um, if you ever get somebody pregnant, your life's going to change. It's it's chaos. It is absolute um you go from the happiest, nicest human being sitting in front of you to Satan spawn <laughs> in a matter of a nanosecond. So I tell you, after going through that and seeing uh, my girl's mom give birth and stuff, I... Did you pull the baby out? Uh, no, I did not. I did. You did, really? I did, yeah. I it was crazy. I still, like... I remember saying to her at the time, I did not realize how strong women were. Like, oh. I, I see what she went through, and I honestly, I wouldn't put myself through it. I wouldn't. <laughs> no. And I just kept saying to her over and over again, I can't believe how strong you are. Like, 
I and going through that for the nine months and well, you know, like the the doctor I, when my my daughter was born, I, te- I was I had tears coming out of my oh, eyes. Yeah, right? I, I was I was crying, and the doctor looks at me and she's like, "Oh, you you, you know, you're crying because you're, you're you're you know you're so happy." I'm like, "I'm no, I'm crying because now I know that my girlfriend there can beat me up." <laughs> Seriously, like no word of lie, that's what happened. So, the doctor's killing herself laughing. But uh, yeah, it was it was pretty funny. And you're absolutely right. Like w- the women are so strong when it goes to that. So when they, like, pff, man, like to grow a human. Yeah, you grew a human. Yeah, that's that's pretty insane. Easy. That's for sure. And mad respect to you women out there. Like huge, huge. If you're a woman, listen to this. So didn't you cut the cord too? I did, yeah. I uh, I wiped the poop uh, that uh, I didn't do the that. ex pooped out. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, baby mama. Oh, yeah. It was a <laughs> it was a deuce of the century. I remember with my firstborn, um, we used a midwife with both of them. Yeah, we we so did. we went to the hospital the first time, and my second one was born at home. And when my first one came out, um, their mom brought her up on her chest. And she was facing the other way, so I didn't even see my daughter's face for like at least five minutes. Ouch! And uh, but yeah, I had tears running down my face. You know, we we're all tired, and, oh, yeah. and of course, my daughter, and just like a uh, like a yeah. miracle, you know, right Absolutely. in front of my eyes. And yeah, the the second time, um, the plan was to for her to be in a pool, so we rented a pool, and uh, <laughs> like in the in the living did room, you, like did she you was going to pause it back. <laughs> <laughs> she was going to give birth in the pool. But when the time came, um, there was a little connection that I was supposed to hook up to where the shower nozzle goes. And I was supposed to turn on the shower and the, the you know, to fill that up yeah. that way. But the, you know, the little thing that you pull up for the water to yeah, yeah, come shower, through, I, yeah. it wouldn't stay up. So I couldn't fill up the bathtub because I couldn't go back and forth. Vice grips. So I uh, pulled it up and hooked vice grips to it. Oh, it wouldn't stay up. Yeah, yeah. See, I'd... Industrious. You yeah. should have been there. <laughs> no, I'm good. But yeah, I agree. but yeah, yeah. So she gave birth on the uh, futon that was in the living room. That's when I was sitting on earlier. <laughs> that same one, yeah. Ouch! Ouch! Yeah, it's. But yeah, yeah, that we, was we, awesome. Yeah, we had a midwife, and um, I, I right from the very get go, I'm like, no, I do not want a midwife. I don't want this sorcery and witchcraft around me. <laughs> No, thank you. I do not want this, you know, the hippy dippy stuff. No, thanks. And she was like, but let's just give it a try. You know, my cousin's a doula and this, that, the yeah. other thing. I'm like, all right, I'll hear you out. You know, like, I'll listen. And so to keep the peace, we went with a midwife, right? So. Did, uh, were the, they work out of their home? No, this one was, um, it was the one down the road above uh, London Drugs. You know, I don't know. Uh-huh. I can't remember what it's called. Um, horrible. Like, horrible? Horrible experience. Really? Horrible, horrible, horrible experience. Every time it was some issue. So <laughs> when my daughter, and I say this emphatically, daughter was born, they marked her gender as a boy. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. They got her name wrong, her gender wrong. Um, their weight was wrong. Like I took pictures of my phone of the scale, you know, with my daughter on the scale. And when I looked at the birth record, I'm like, what is this? And I went back in my pictures and I looked, I'm like, the weight is wrong. Like, like what was this person doing? Like my experience, I loved it. It was it, when we first moved into our house, there was a magnet on the fridge that said West, West Coast Midwives. So we phoned that number and it ended up being down the street. It was a lady. That's she the had, one we went to. Yeah, above the London Drugs. No, there. it was in her house oh, where okay. we went. And uh, you know that plaza down from your old place there, where the where the blockbuster videos or Rogers videos. Oh be? yeah, yeah. Right up, upstairs in there, there's a midway midwifery. Oh well, yeah. This lady did it out of her house, and we every appointment, you know, we'd be sitting on the couch, it was nice and comfortable, never rushed, and uh, yeah, the second time it was the same office but a different lady and. Uh, I would totally recommend really a midwife after my experience and the home birth too. First of all, they don't do anything. They they won't do that at home if there's any kind of risk. Yeah. And we were close to the hospital anyways. So if anything came up, but uh, their mom, 
I remember her saying like after she gave birth, she got in the shower and we went right to bed. Like really? She loved it. And she said the first time the drive to the hospital was horrible. And she just loved, yeah. And then the midwife came to our house every day for the first two weeks. And then after that, it was like every other week or something just to check, check, you know, up, to check yeah. the weight and all that stuff. And yeah, we never had to go to the hospital. So, so we went to the midwife. Um, we went to, a, we actually went to see a, a, a prenatal doctor and everything like that. Whatever they're called. I can't remember. Um, just to uh, kind of okay, see what the doctor's about. And then we went and saw the midwife. She wanted to go with the midwife. She felt more comfortable there. Then again, the doctor we got was kind of, I think he was like eight hours from retirement. Like the guy was probably, <laughs> I think the guy gave birth to Jesus. So, or the guy birthed Jesus. I like didn't give birth to him. But um, yeah, he was, he was a very old kind of guy. And um, yeah, I think that really put her off of the doctor situation. So. Yeah, we just we decided to go with the midwife. Once. So, do you have a doula too? We, I don't. Yes, the, the office had a doula service. Oh yeah, but you got to pay for that, right? Or we did any? Well, we didn't, we, but we there was like an, an option. You're supposed to pay for it, but you just didn't. Well, the, we didn't have one, but oh, so I, they they had they the offered it, but it, it was yeah, going to yeah. cost money. I don't so, remember how much, but this was this midwifery was actually covered by it was free for us yeah we didn't pay for the midwife yeah and the doula service was actually a part of oh, that. oh. but it kind of it was it was a weird kind of the lady was uh, eh, <laughs> a little kind of magoo you know like just not she wasn't someone that she didn't fit our personality types oh, at yeah. all actually none of the midwives did um that's too bad ours was awesome I we we've, we've definitely heard people like we we asked around and so many people were like yeah midwives are awesome they're the way to go um, do it do it do it and then you know and, I don't know at the end of the day it was a doctor that delivered our baby oh really yeah why because we had to go to the hospital because our midwife we paged her no answer really paged no answer called no answer called no answer I'm like I'm like ours was available. Anytime we went to the hospital because she, uh, um, my ex had to get induced, so we were seven days late. So she got induced. <laughs> I'm sitting there in the living room, and I hear this blood curdling scream <laughs> coming from the, the bathroom and <laughs> the master bedroom. And uh, I, I, I can't remember what they're called, but they're those two balloons that they inflate to dilate the cervix. Um, anyways, I don't know. <laughs> She went to go pee, and all of a sudden, this thing falls out. And she's like, oh, my God, we're having a baby. So I'm paging and calling the midwife, and nothing's happening. And I'm like, get in the car. We're going. So it, we uh, we ended up jumping in the car. And when I was on my way to San Penn. Oh, yeah. The, the one out, the, the, out that way on the peninsula. And I, you know, finally, as I'm just about to turn off the highway to go there, I get the call from the midwife. She's like, oh, what's going on? I'm like. Having a baby here. <laughs> like, did you get the 911 page <laughs> kind of thing? And she's like, But she oh. never came? She's like, okay, well, I can be out there in a couple hours. I'm like, uh, no, you, you don't get what I'm saying. We're having a baby. I'm like, like now. And uh, we, we get to the hospital and, you know, first time dad, I'm freaking out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just losing my marbles. Did you take a, did they give you a, a tour of the place before? They did, yeah. So I kind of knew where it was, but, you know, all logic goes right out the yeah. window. So it was I, like, as I'm walking in, I got a dart hanging out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, running through the parking lot, having a dart, because it's probably going to be the last one I have for like a million hours. So I finally get into the hospital, I'm like, where do we deli- where do you deliver babies at? <laughs> They're like, what? Like, she's pregnant. Where do we go to have a baby? They're like, uh, like the delivery room. I'm like, yeah, where, where's the delivery room? <laughs> like, oh, it's upstairs on whatever floor it was, like sixth floor, fifth floor or something. Like that. And uh, so we get up there, and it was just pretty much they walked her right in. They're like, all right, you're getting the epi. Boom, gave her the epidural. And oh, about really? 10 minutes, 15 minutes later, it was just wham, bam, thank you, man. Out, fast, eh? out comes a kid. I had to pull the thing out. It was weird. How long was she in the hospital after? Four days. Really? Yeah, four days. Five oh, days. But after our first, uh, she was there for three hours. 
Really? Yeah. See, Went she was gi- after. she was given the option that we could go home because we did have the midwife. Mm-hmm. But that's why I say so. Um, get back to the midwife topic. Um, how we both hated it. That's when she's just like, "This is midwives are stupid." Like, oh, I'd feel the same if I had the same experience. Yeah, she's like, midwives are absolutely redundant. Like, what was the point of all this? We didn't get any medical. Like, they didn't they, they're they're not licensed doctors, so they can't you know do the medical stuff that doctors can. Yeah. So we had to go see a midwife just to hear about how the pregnancy is going, and then we had to go to a doctor at the same time. So she's like, why don't we just go to the doctor the whole time? I'm like, oh, that's what I said at the very beginning. <laughs> of course, you don't say that to her at the time, but yeah. I've said that to her since. And, you know, so that's that was kind of the, the problem. That's when she hated the midwife. She's like, what are you doing? Like, 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 why are we here? Like, you know, like, why are you even here now? Like, it was good. Yeah. So, I don't know, midwives are, I mean, everybody's got their own story, man. Like, some people hate Chevy, some people hate Ford, some yeah, people, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's just, it's your personal preference and... Did you take home the placenta and eat it? I made a placenta sandwich. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, right. We made Are a placenta you... sandwich. Yeah, You're fried serious. placenta sandwich. We both ate it. <laughs> I heard, I remember them saying that uh, it was good for gardens too. I don't know, but you know, I'll tell you right now, if you put the placenta <laughs> in the garden and something happens in 20 years and they dig the garden up and they do DNA tests, they're going to find like a missing child in your garden. Yeah. Did you have a baby? It's pretty there? cool though. I remember them showing me like they're like lifting it up and like, yeah, that's where sack. your baby was. Yeah, yeah. It, it was kind of it was definitely interesting. Like and I didn't realize they actually had to push that out too. They push a lot. Like, out, it's dude. like it's like yeah, a lot comes out when they're when they can't feel from their. I don't know. Did did your ex there? Did she get the epidural? No, she, she didn't. Did no, she natural? had. Uh, that's why she hates. You. I think she's just. That's ga- why you guys are together. A bit of gas. Is she? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you did you give her a stick to bite down on? Like a chew toy from your dog? I, oh. I, I made that joke. <laughs> Don't joke with it. what he, here's another I, one. I you fellas, kept my mouth shut. T- I I remember when we went for a little tour of the hospital and they showed us where everything was. I went in there, didn't say a word. I grabbed a bowl of water, a cloth. I kept Ice chips. putting her on her. Yeah, I kept putting it on her forehead and wringing it out, and I was just being quiet. I didn't want to yeah. <laughs> be irritating, or just yeah. I just wanted to kind of take care of her and close your mouth and just. The only reason you're there is just just for support. Yeah, then, her but, her mom actually she was in there, and she was talking a lot, and she left to go to the bathroom. And as soon as she left, she said, "Don't let her back in." <laughs> <laughs> See, I was, see, when we were, like, there was about a, by the time we got to the hospital, I called, like, all the family. Like, there was, I actually, I called, we had the one contact. So you call that one person, they call everybody. I mm-hmm. don't know if you guys had the same thing. Yeah. So um, it, it just happened to be um, my dad. Um, <clears throat> so I called him and we get to the hospital and about 20 minutes behind us, everybody's there. Yeah. I know that's nice everybody. when I came out. My family's there, and it's it was, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, it's pretty cool. I was, I was the annoying one, like, like I was, I, I kept running up to the waiting room, like, okay, this is happening. I gotta go back in, like, and they're just like, stop coming out here, stay in there. You're having a kid. I'm like, yeah, is that what I'm supposed to do? Like, <laughs> I was, I was dumb. Like, I was just, it was like a first time bonehead thing, right? So, so do you, after having a kid, would you have more? I've been asked that quite a bit. So going going back to the single dad dating life thing, you know, guys like us, we're like we're both fairly attractive gentlemen, and so we can attract a wide variety of um, of women. You know, in 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 the age spectrum is where I'm, what I'm saying. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, especially on the Tinder, I don't know what you have your settings at, but when I was when I did go on um, the dating apps, I think I set mine at. Um, 23 to like 44. Yeah, I think mine ends at 44, but 28, I think it starts at. Yeah. I figured 23 because you're you're definitely out of the bar star scene, you know. Um, you know, you kind of like, you're either going to college or getting your career started. So you're more career oriented and, and kind of mm-hmm. matured a little bit, right? You're, you've got all the stuff in your system. I don't want to be with a girl that's, oh, let's go to the bar. Yeah, totally. There's actually a setting on Match where I'll select it where... I only want to see profiles if they have kids and if yeah. they don't want kids. Like there's an option that they, they'll nice. be, they'll, they can put if they want kids someday, maybe, or whatever. 
I select don't totally. want because I, me personally, I don't want anymore. Well, and that's that's where I kind of like I have one that I know of. Um, <laughs> you never know. Um, but so when 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 I did go on there at the time, I didn't have kids. Right. Yeah. So I'm I'm forty I'm forty years old now, so it's kind of where I'm close to forty. Um, if I if if it was the right woman, and it was like an instant click, like, oh my god, you are the end all be all, which I honestly and I'll I, I thought that was the girl I was just with, the one that I just split up with a week and a half ago. Um, I honestly thought that was her. I thought that was the end all be all. Like I wanted her to be my last first kiss. Really? Like absolutely. Like hands down, amazing woman. Amazing. If she would just let go of my ex, if she could just yeah. accept the fact that my ex is going to be in my life forever. Do you think that hands down she could? I don't know. I don't know. Like if she if she told you that she could or is that she would try, would you get back together with her? Well, that's we. So we did try. Like so, after she blocked me for the four days, um, somehow I guess she must have unblocked my text messages or something like that, and, and the phone or, or something, because mm-hmm. I messaged her. I'm like, just please call me. Like, just please call me. Like, I want to talk to you. I can't remember what the message said, but I was like, please call me. I just want to talk to you. I want to figure. Out, I want to figure this out. I love you. And so, I got a call, and I'm like. Listen, like, I don't know what you're, like, like what's going on? Hey, anyway, so we, we had a chat. We talked it out. Then she came down. Um, we're we're going to get into the having the kids in a minute. <laughs> the story leads to there. So she came down, and we um, we ended up having a great night on s- this Saturday we just had, actually. Um, talked a lot. Talked about, you know, everything. And, and it, the biggest thing was... Will she be able to get over, you know, the baby mama, um, her being in my life? And she said she'd try and everything like that. She really put a lot of effort into it. Great. And then we started, you know, once the baby mama came up, she, we started talking about kids. And if we, you know, like, would you want to have more? I said, I don't want to have any after 40. So if I turn 41, no more. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to be... 60 years or you know 65 years old watching my daughter graduate kind of thing yeah. right so um so yeah so we kind of started talking about that we were having a really good really really good conversation about it so we went out for to the she asked if i want to go for dinner so i said yeah let's go so we went down to one of the a fancy restaurant on the water and uh, I, had to, I had to go to the washroom and uh you know i, I trust her I left my phone unlocked and open on the table, and I was actually texting with or messaging with the ex to uh, figure out what time um, she's going to drop the daughter off tomorrow on uh, on Monday or mm-hmm. on Sunday. Um, um, Monday morning, sorry. And uh, so I just left it open there, and I changed my profile picture to a picture of the girl I was with and my dog and I at the top of a mountain. And so she messages me. Oh, I see you're back with so and so. Um, hope she's a little bit more mature this time, or or uh, something like that. Like, <laughs> so she reads this as I'm coming back from the washroom. I could feel. Oh, I could I imagine feel the energy was just not right in the building, uh-huh. and the closer I got to the table, the look, <laughs> the look that I got was it sent shivers down my spine i'm not kidding you've known me for damn near 25 years i've done some pretty wild and crazy stuff i rode a scooter from banff to victoria (laughs) in the middle of winter so i'm not really scared of too much that That gave me chills and shivers that look and i knew i just walked up to the table and i said are we leaving now and she's like yep i'm like what happened and she just went up one side of me and down the other before I could even say boo. I heard the whole story. I'm just like, what? And that was it. And I was just like, 
I'm done. I cannot have you um, continuously going on about my ex. She's going to be there forever. If you can't get over it, then you're going to have to get over me. Yeah, that'd be a so stressful relationship. It, it was, you know, and, and that's why I say I thought she was the end all be all. And she's amazing, like absolutely hands down amazing. If she could just let go of the fact that I respect my ex. Yeah, you think that she would like, like that about you? Well, if you if you look at the Facebook post that I that I posted, I don't know if you've looked at it recently. No, there's not uh, since that day. There's about thirty or forty comments on there, and ninety nine percent of them are from women. Actually, I think they're all from women. I think one hundred percent of them are from women, except and, me. Well, I commented. <laughs> that's right. So ninety nine percent. I think ninety nine percent of them are from women, and, and you commented as well. Um, but they're all along the lines of saying, good for you, congratulations, we need more men like you in the world, yeah. and this, along that sort of lines. And the way you guys are co-parenting is absolutely amazing. And these are from people that I've known for years and people that I've just met and people that I've never met that are just friends of friends, of friends, you know, or yeah. acquaintances. It's what we need in this world is, is, is two people that get along for the sake of something good. Yeah, that, when my youngest started school, um, she's made this best friend that they're still really good friends now. And um, my ex told me that they had a play date one day and her mom came to pick up her daughter and she said to her, how do you and Dan stay friends? Because her ex, the dad of her five kids, when they broke up, he moved to Vancouver. And the kids don't even see him. That's horrible. Yeah, it is horrible. I couldn't do that. I, I don't even know how... To answer that it's just well, that's what we want that's we're i don't know normal people that <laughs> i don't know things will don't work have a problem it, with each other that's right things will work if you put work into them like you but probably, I, I don't even feel like it's work though we just that's what i mean like, get along and but it's because you actually put work what you do what you're putting work into is making a conscious decision to not be an, an ass and yeah. you know what I mean? She's making a conscious effort and putting work into the fact that she's not going to be a, 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 a dumb ass to you. Right. Like, well, even then the four years that we've been apart, we've never argued about anything. We've uh, literally, it seems like we agree on everything. Like we just, we want the same things. We, I don't know. Like, and I think you and I have literally got to be the two luckiest guys on the face of the earth. Cause I'm in the same boat. Like I mean, we, we, there's, there's literally nothing we don't agree on. Yeah. Like we did our uh, separation agreement and our divorce online. Like we sat down together. We, we did everything on her laptop <laughs> and did it through the mail. Like we had no problems agreeing on anything. Like, yeah. Well, I, you know, and, and that's kind of the same with uh, my ex and I. We're going to a mediator just because this mediator sp specializes in, um, structuring things that are best for the kids mm -hmm. and especially because my daughter's two right so you know that's a huge development er, er, like yeah. age so so is there something that she that you guys aren't agreeing on it's not that we don't agree it's just we don't know like my personal thing is i want four on four off i think that'd be fantastic uh -huh. like i said four on four off with on the third day go to a park or the pool or a picnic or walk or whatever yeah um she doesn't she's like well i don't think that'll work and it's like okay well why she's like i just don't know and it's like okay well do you know do you, like do you not know if it'll work or do you not know if it's good for their daughter or you know um she she says so she doesn't really have an answer for me so she doesn't know why yeah yeah she just comes to she has to just she wants to go talk to somebody and you know she already went and talked to the mediator now it's my turn to go talk to the mediator oh so you do it separately you do a, you do you each do an interview with the mediator, yeah. then you come together. So, and like I even said, I'm like, listen, why don't we go have a coffee? And let's sit down, you and I talk, and we'll kind of see if we can come up with something that we could kind of make work, and see what they think, and see what they think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I said, but I this the schedule that we have right now obviously isn't working. Um, it's just kind of so wishy washy. It's just not fun. So, so is it just 
no set schedule well this it's a i have sunday mondays and thursdays so i usually get her around uh 9 30 in the morning on sunday so i have her all day sunday then i work at 7 a.m so i gotta take her to play school at um or preschool there at um 6 45 so i can get to work at seven right mm -hmm. so it's wake up and go like it's just and then I, I pick her up at uh, five and then she goes to bed at seven thirty. So yeah, you get, you know, an hour and a half of truck time, you know? So it's kind of, it just doesn't work. Yeah. I want something where I can actually spend time with her and, you know, float the weekends, you know, cause if you have four on four off, you're eventually going to have a whole weekend Yeah, or two, three, three weekends, whole weekends with her. So what do you guys do like every other weekend and, Days during the week or something? Or? Well, that's kind of like, I'd, you might as well do the four on four off, right? Mm -hmm. I remember when I, when I was younger, I saw my dad every, yeah, it was every other weekend. That was it. Didn't see him at all during the week. And I couldn't do that. The older we got, we didn't want to go. Like we wanted to stay. We always lived in townhouses and we just wanted to stay and play with our friends. And so I've been thinking lately that they're worrying almost that uh that's gonna come soon like i'm wondering yeah. if they're actually gonna not want to come with me after school and just go back to kim's or go to a friend's house or whatever and cause i have a friend right now that's going through the same thing where her daughter's got a boyfriend and you know her oh. kids don't want to hang out with her anymore <laughs> <sighs> i cannot i'm not looking forward to that i i yeah i do not want the day that my daughter has a boyfriend yeah, I saw a post. So like, it's like if if I find out, or all these guys are posting. If my daughter comes home with a boyfriend, I'm gonna threaten him with a shotgun. Does that? Or uh -huh. Yeah, trust me. I'm not, I'm not gonna threaten him with a shotgun. But there's gonna be one leaning at the door, nice and polished, <laughs> <laughs> sitting there just in case. That's right. Yeah, here. I'll, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a shotgun shell and I'm gonna just I'm just gonna nicely toss it to him. I'm gonna say after ten, those move a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after ten o'clock, those things move a lot faster, buddy. <laughs> it's not a threat; it's the truth. Well, you got a long ways to go. Well, nowadays they're dating at like eleven, <laughs> ten. Not my kids. No, I know because you got the shotgun <laughs> in the door. They still think boys are gross. Good. It's Good. funny. Um, I uh, I've been keeping a list on my phone. Actually, it's going to be on an upcoming podcast where I go through the list. But ever since they were born. I've been keeping a list of um, funny things that they say. Yeah. And uh, just the other day, it was the last thing I listed on the list. It was like two days ago. And uh, I've been rewatching Smallville with them because I thought they'd like it. We're on season four right now. You still watch well, Smallville? I just restarted like a month you ago. You used to cancel <laughs> plans to rip home in your 1976 roller painted green. <laughs> Honda Civic. That's right. To watch so my grandpa painted Smallville. It. <laughs> Anyways, it started with Lex Luthor in bed with a girl. And oh. uh um both of them were like, ew. And I was like, that's how you guys were born. And my youngest goes, Wait, you and mommy did sex? <laughs> <laughs> <That's> hilarious. <laughs> did I ever tell you after my, my first my first daughter was born um when i'd pick her up from daycare i would bring her into the bathroom and put toys on the floor and have her in there while i shower and i open up the shower curtain one day and she looks at me and she goes daddy tail <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! I've gone there. Your, like, does your daughter say funny stuff? She, oh, she's oh yeah, she says some pretty funny things. She's very smart. Um, uh, it's not so much. It's not so much like ew sex or stuff like that. Just the way she says things is just like spur of the moment, and it's like, you, like what? Do you what? what are you talking about, kid? <laughs> Like she she does she she forms everything into a question for some reason. Like I don't know why she's going through this phase. Like everything's a question. Like, how was your day today, honey? 
my day was good? <laughs> yeah, or yeah. I played with a car? I like, what? <laughs> did you? Are, you? are you asking me? You did what? I don't know if you did. I'm asking you a question here. <laughs> does she does she have any like made up words for things that she can't really say? Like my youngest used to say "dido" instead of "thank you." No dido. No, not really. Um, so I had uh, my motorbike, and uh, she called it a whoa whoa. Well, really? A whoa, whoa, yeah, <laughs> and uh, so every time she sees a motorbike now, I'm like, I'm like, that's a motorbike, honey. She's like, no, it's a whoa, whoa. I'm like, it's a motorbike. She's like, whoa, whoa. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna get into a pissing match with a two year old, but that's actually a motorbike. If you call it a whoa, whoa in 20 years, people are gonna look at you, you got rocks in your head. I remember my parents <laughs> telling me that uh, since my dad was a musician and um, in bands and. There was microphones there. I always thought that they were calling it a Michael phone. So I would call it a, a Danny phone. phone. <laughs> a what? A Danny phone. <laughs> Danny phone. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, why are you calling it a Michael phone? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm talking into a Danny phone right now. That's right. Danny phone. Yeah, she says some, she says some funny things. She, um, I mean, she doesn't say seat belt. She says belt seat. <laughs> I don't know why she's she's Lex Dixick, I think, but, and you know, but it's like she confuses yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Mm. She's like, "I'm going to mommy's house yesterday." It's like, "Yeah, now you're going tomorrow." She's like, "No, yesterday." I'm Mine like, were like that too, with times too. Yeah, yeah, and you know, she's like, you know, like she just confuses upstairs and downstairs. You know, she's like, "Daddy, can we go upstairs?" And like, we are upstairs, honey. She's like, "No, we need to go upstairs." I'm like. You can't go higher than this. Yeah. Like, we're, we're at the top floor. Like, where, where do you want to go? Like, stay right heaven? It ain't happening, kid. So do, I'm like, do you want to go downstairs? She's like, yeah, let's go downstairs. So, yeah, okay. There you go. Okay, you're smart now. Way to be. But, yeah, I mean, when, I, 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 I kind of can't wait, but I can, to, for her to get to, like, your kid's age where, you know, she actually has a comprehension of. Yeah. And when what, she can start calling you daddy butthead and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mine went through that, and then they went through a swearing phase. Are they? Did you break? They, 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 they've they've almost stopped with the swearing. They, they'll swear to each other and call each other names, but me, I've I've had enough of that. They they've stopped. So what what made them stop? Like how did you get them to stop? I would get so mad. Actually, a couple months ago, um, their mom came and dropped them off, and uh, my daughter said something about having a swear chart at the house and she was almost done it. And then she gets a prize and I was like, what? I haven't heard you swear in months. And their mom's like, Oh, it must be nice. They just said the F word seven times on their way <laughs> here. And after she left, I was like, why, why do you swear to mommy and not me? And she says, because you get fussy and put us in our room. So mom doesn't punish. <sighs> See, I, I'm come, I think me, I think that's kind of the same situation that I'm going to have because I punish. Mm -hmm. I give time out. She's two. Like, I don't care. You, you're you you know what's right and wrong because she knows how to say yes please uh thank you you're welcome yeah. um she knows right from wrong she says sorry she you know she'll she'll step on her uh my dog i have a 110 pound rottweiler mm -hmm. who's the friendliest dog in the world but she'll step on her puppy's paw and she knows right away she's like i'm sorry puppy so she does know right from wrong so i've started smacking her hand not mm -hmm. hard but like, I'll give her a nice little tap on the head. Like, no, you don't do that. I find that on on the Sunday when I when she gets dropped off, and she has about an hour worth of tantrums with me when she first gets dropped off. She really pushes her limits, mm -hmm. and I'll put her in her place. Like, you're at daddy's house. Like, this doesn't fly here. And she's great, and you know, all the way up until the rest. Like the rest of the time, so do you she's think fine. that is and that just moms? Just and, do you think that's being with your mom, or do you think it's just a transition, getting used to well, it? Or? So going back to the mediator thing, this is what we're going to figure out the mediator. But I know oh, yeah. Brittany, or I know her mom's parenting technique is a lot different than mine. Over there, it's kind of a free for all. Like I'm like if she's done with this toy, when she's at my house, if she's done with this toy, let's just put it to the side. You don't have to put it in the away. You don't have to put it in completely clean up every time you want to switch toys. Let's just put it to the side so we can play, have room to play with other stuff. So let's uh -huh. keep it kind of neat, right? Like, I have a rule at my house. The room's clean before they eat dinner. Yeah, and that's, eventually that's what it, it'll yeah. turn into. So that's kind, of, that's kind of what I'm trying to get to her into instill in her now is that, okay, let's, if you're done playing with this, let's just put it, let's put it to the side or you can put it over to the corner there and we can play with something else. And then 
at nighttime we do clean up mm-hmm. you know at her at, at her mom's house i know it's like i've gone over there to pick her up like so you can't even times. see the floor <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And it, but I mean, it's it's not like it's not dirty and gross and disgusting. Yeah. It's just toys everywhere. Yeah. So it's kind of like a almost like a free for all in a way. But that's what my backyard is for. My backyard, I, I got twelve acres. Like it's just a free for all. Like go ahead, destroy the backyard. I don't mm-hmm. care. Like she has a quad. Really? Uh, you have twelve yeah. acres. Yeah. Yeah. So be nice. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> we have a big backyard. <laughs> But yeah, so I mean, she's got a quad, she bombs around on a quad, she just leaves it in the middle of the yard. Totally fine with that. The wagon, go ahead, leave it in the middle of the yard. That's what outside is for. I'd rather be outside and teach her that, leave a mess outside, it's fine. You can be dirty outside, get dirty. I, I encourage you to get dirty, explore, hurt yourself in a way, you know, like mm-hmm. fall off. But inside, my parents, so yeah, my parenting technique is a lot different than, than, uh, than her mom's. And Do you ever discuss that with her? Do, yeah. Like but you, uh, teach her how to clean but, after herself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should. Eh? But no, there's nothing wrong with her parenting technique. That's mm-hmm. one thing I, I want to stress: is there's nothing wrong with it. It's just different. Yeah, it did. Different, it's just yeah. different than mine. My daughter's a great kid, but my daughter throws little tantrums and pushes my limits. Like she's used to just getting her way. Mom dotes on her. Yeah, and just like. Oh, you want this? Okay, you're hungry? Here, have this. Okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, it's funny. My my oldest said to me a couple of weeks ago that her mom has a bad memory because she always forgets, so she knows how to get away with things. <laughs> <laughs> so your kid's going to work for NASA. <laughs> Seriously, your kid's smart. My kid, I think, you know, like aspirations to be like a Walmart greeter. Like... <laughs> Like that's where my kid's gonna end up. I just have a feeling, but my kid's actually really smart, super smart. But yeah, I'd like to meet her one day. Yeah, yeah, she she'd be funny on a podcast. She'd be she'd be kind of no, she wouldn't. She'd be, <laughs> Is she good at having conversations? I can yeah. remember when my oldest when I remember everything with my oldest because it was the first and uh, <laughs> yeah. second one's like. Fuck. I remember driving her home one day, and the first time I I felt like I was actually talking to her. I thought it was so cool. Yeah, I, I get that. It's 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 slow progression. Yeah, you know, every t- I pick her up, it's like a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, the things she says, like she just like I don't have to ask her; she just tells me now. Yeah, you know, in, in in a lot of stuff like I played with a car yesterday. It's like, oh, you mean you played it today at school? Yeah, yeah, today at school. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you know, and so and oh, I play, and Finney played with it too, and you know, so was, you know, she's kind of telling me things that I really don't give a shit about. <laughs> to tell you the truth, yeah. it's like, cool. Here's my phone with Paw Patrol. <laughs> Just shut up until we get home. <laughs> no, but um, it, it's it's very yeah. It's it, I can remember. I can kind of remember when. She first actually said something that was coherent enough that you could like figure out it was a sentence kind uh-huh. of thing, you know, or you, could, or, or you could figure out what she was trying to say or what she was saying. That was pretty cool. Like I can definitely remember that. But yeah, it's 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 very interesting. Yeah, Dad. Yeah, it's cool to see all the things they go through. I, I remember the first time they clapped, even and. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think she's my. I think my daughter was like a month old when she was clapping. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, she was talking before she was what? Yeah, my oldest was two. My my second was way later, but yeah, my my uh, first one, she walked really quickly and yeah. I remember she used to scoot on her butt, and she used to get like this high, like a foot off the floor, like just bouncing up and down <laughs> her butt. <laughs> I got video of that. <laughs> see, I see. Yeah, my daughter. Yeah, she walked before she was one. She talked before she was no, obviously not full sentence, but she, mm-hmm. mommy, daddy, or yeah. mama, dada, puppy. Puppy was actually her second word, so she could say dad, dada, pup, puppy. I think there was one one that. Uh, was, I think there was one or grandpa. Oh yeah, and then mama. So mama was like fourth. I'm like, haha, that's where you sit in the higher. <laughs> it goes me, the dog, then grandpa, then you. That was a big joke. That's maybe why we're not together. But, um, yeah. So she was. She did all these things before one, and then like she, like a month after her first birthday, 
progression stopped. Like, like there was no advancements. Like she wasn't talking anymore. She wasn't like walking anymore. It was just like, really? Whoa. Like what's, what's happening here? Like, like, yeah, it was, it was actually scary in a way. Cause you're like, oh, you know, like my apologies to anybody out there that has one, but is my kid retarded? You know, uh-huh. I, I mean, and I don't mean retarded as a, like a, a derogatory term, like handicapped, like mentally challenged, like, like I, it was a legitimate fear. I, I was terrified. Like, yeah. God, I used to cry. I used to bawl myself to sleep sometimes. So what happened? It was just, it was just all of a sudden. Um, so was that, were you guys still together at that time? Uh, we were just during the during the um the kind of lull there that's when we kind of split and then so do you think that could have had anything to do with it what the split up or the lull? with her with her lull i don't know is because but we did we saw each other all the time like like at the very when we first split it was very amicable it was very very amicable um, we remained friends. She'd come over. She'd sleep over. There was, there was still a little bit of intimacy there and a little bit of romance, uh, but not enough to sustain a relationship. Mm-hmm. And um, so, it eventually just got to a point where it was like, mm, yeah, no, and no more sleepovers. Or that. But for the first couple months, um, she would come over. So I'd, I'd see my daughter all the time. So it was mommy and daddy was like, to her. I don't, to my daughter, I don't think it was really any different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mommy and daddy were just. I just asked because my my oldest, she we ended up taking her to a, a doctor, and she gets these ticks whenever something major happens or like a transition, like with school ending, Christmas break. The first time we noticed it was when um, her mom's or her grandma's dog died, and she all day, literally every breath she took was. <sighs> Like, like big deep all breaths, right? day, it almost hyperventilating. Like w- yeah, when you mentioned like crying to sleep, I remember like holding her hand while she fell asleep and crying, like, oh, and and terrifying. listening to her breathe. And then when she fell asleep, it went back to normal. Yeah, and there was other times like you know she'd pull over a seatbelt and she'd be like, oh, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, like try and get it off. And oh, and sick. she's had other ticks too, where she would like all day long she would lick the side of her cheek and she had a big sore, or she like she's gone through phases where she she'll rip out her. Um, eyelashes yeah wow. it, it seemed to settle down now but she'll she still does once in a while weird things with her hands like plays with thumbs well it's, it's more like just oh yeah like, like bending her fingers and squishing an imaginary ball and yeah, she'll yeah. open like open her mouth and yeah but the doctor said it'll seem to she'll probably grow out of it but it yeah. seems like any transition that's why i asked if if that how ha- that started when you guys split up it, it, it kind of i guess yeah, I guess that's when it did start, but I don't think I think like, I don't know. I'm not I'm not so a child you, did you guys live together? We did. Yeah, we yeah, we we uh yeah, we, yeah. So who stayed in the place where we you we guys? we got rid of the house. Oh, you did. Yeah, we got rid of the house. Um she actually went and stayed with her mother um for the first So we've been seeing that even if you guys are still having sleepover and stuff. That's a big change. It's it's a big change, Moving yeah. And... But I mean, she would like yeah. It was still a big change, but I don't. The lull kind of happened before, mm. like the, the the progression of her advancement stopped prior to uh, the the split. So and how it, long did that last for? Was seven months? And so it, I have a friend that she's got a daughter. I think she's three, and she still doesn't talk. But that's normal. Like, yeah. well, I don't know how normal that is, but like, I know up until two, not talking, or two and a half is is, is fine. Like, there's yeah. there's a couple of, uh, kids at her um, at her daycare there that don't talk, and they're two and a half. Mm-hmm. I think they can. They just choose not to. Yeah. And there's a big difference. Like, I think a lot of people don't give enough stock to the fact that your kid probably knows how to talk, just doesn't want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. I know how to do a ton of stuff. I just don't want to do it. It doesn't mean I'm stupid and don't know how to do it. It's just, I just don't want to. Yeah, I remember even my, my brother's daughter, when she was young, she was really quiet. Like she could, you know, she spoke, but barely. Yeah. Like even, you know, it'd be like, hi, and no response, you know. And yeah. 
Some kids are just quiet. Yeah. And those are the kids that grew up to be presidents and, and you know, CEOs and just, just some of the smartest people in the world. Well, thanks a lot for coming on the podcast. Yeah, it was great to be here. Yeah, it was fun. You should come on again. I, I, I definitely will. It's been, uh, it's been too long. Remember to subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast. Visit me on Facebook at Dad Life Podcast One and Instagram and Twitter at Dad Life Podcast. See you next week. Mm-hmm.